Um, I'm Tassos. Um, we're going to be talking today about uh, technical decision making and ways of uh, making this. So just before I started, I wanted to ask who has been a developer 10 years ago? Can you just keep your hands up? All right. So a lot of, of the things that I'm going to say um, are relevant to you guys. Um, you, you would have seen the same um, journey as me. Um, for newer people, you, you will understand a little bit how we got there, here, right? And what is um, important is to understand that once upon a time, life for a Drupal developer was much easier than it is now. And over the last few years, uh, the average technical project uh, has, and Drupal project has changed signif significantly, right? So we always had sizable builds in the Drupal world, comparing to other platforms. But we moved from that, from have, having sizable builds, into multi-million dollar um, engagements, right? And those projects are usually, you know, coming with uh, decoupled front ends. They have elaborate system architectures. They, they have a lot of third party integrations. And also, as the complexity of the projects change, the, the complexity of the infrastructure changed as well. And, you know, back in the day, a few servers were enough uh, to, to host your solution. And we had very simple go to market mechanisms, you know, perhaps a cell script that was executing remote SSH commands. Uh, but now we have containerized public clouds, we have distributed file systems, we have high availability databases, and we have complex integrations and deployment pipelines to get our code uh, reach production. And actually our ways of working have shifted also. So what used to be like a team of a couple of developers who were handed over a few uh, Photoshop files, everything before you know the actual development started, is now you know multidisciplinary teams, um, agile teams. You know we do iterative component uh, design systems. We have JavaScript front-end frameworks. Um, we have third-party component libraries, and we are talking about omni-channel uh, deployments and apps and websites. So essentially, we moved from this to this, right? So, um, and what's more important is that digital doesn't have an end date. You know, everything now is in, in product mode and we talk about products, not, not projects. And what that means is that our work often is not governed by a beginning, a middle and, and an end, like, like a project, right? We're working on platforms, on services. They, we have fluid scope. We have flexible timelines. We have adjustable budgets. And what that means is that our work often is not, it does not end. It needs refinement. We need to refactor it. We need to adapt it. Right? And that means that we are in a constant state of flux in a dynamic environment. And that, you know, as you all know, comes with a whole other set of challenges. And some of those are, how would you make the best technical decisions when you have a dynamic environment? And how would you know when you make a decision whether that's good enough for now or for a given context and that you can move on and manage the scope of the project? How, how would you know that a specific decision is introducing some kind of technical debt and that you, you need to go back and address it at some point? Um, and how do you document those decisions? Especially in a, in, a, in, a, in a complex project, you would have many of those. How, how do you do it? And how would you make sure that everybody who's participating in the project and has something to contribute has a voice? And that voice can be heard and, and can be factored in into the decision. And finally, how do you create consensus within your team? You know, Technical people sometimes are very passionate about specific things and tools, but they may not be the relevant ones for a specific context. How would you get those people on board on decisions? So today, I will present a methodology we have defined, uh, we developed at FFW, 
for driving key technical decisions, and especially in the context of implementing digital experience platforms or digital uh, products. So who am I? Uh, I'm Deputy VP of Digital Solutions Europe uh, at FFW. I consider myself an expert on digital, agile tech and data. I've been many years in the field. I have been architecting complex digital solutions for um, over 15 years now. Um, I've worked in enterprises, in private sector, public sector, with the third sector, NGOs. Um, I've worked with clients in EMEA, in Europe, um, in North America and in Asia. And fun fact about me is that at some point in my life I did a PhD on AI. Back then it wasn't sexy, we were just like in windowless rooms <laughs> with uh, not very fast computers. Uh, and yeah, and here I am, I'm Tassos. So let's take a deep breath and let's get to the agenda today. Um, I'm going to talk about is a KTD, a key technical decision. Um, I'm going to slice it up, see how we were making those uh, in FFW and we help our clients and consult with them making them. I'll show you what are the different workflows and the context of having a KTD. Um, I'll show you a real example. We had to, to run a KTD for a, for a project. And then I'll share with you some observations and lessons learned. And finally, we'll have some time to, um, to, to, to discuss it and ask questions. Right? So first of all, what's a KTD, a key technical decision. So key technical decisions are decisions that have profound strategic and architectural implications for the organization, right? And that means that they either enable or inhibit strategic goals. And that has to do with the evolution of an organization, not necessarily a platform, the growth of the organization and the value creation of that organization. And why do we talk about organizational level? And that's because right now, technology is the medium where organizations see growth, evolution, and value creation. And with that central part of technology, we understand that the projects that are coming out and the work that is coming out and commission is, is more complex and requires technical decision-making processes. So one obvious uh, observation is that the KTD is not a user story, right? So user stories are about technical implementation details. They're about functionality, right? They still may require discussion over the details, specific approach, but the, the main thing is that the approach has already been given at the point of, of a user story. And that is the role of the KTD. That's the strategic that has the profound effect and then the user story is the implementation detail. And user stories obviously carry a lot of weight. They influence the project delivery, but not necessarily the strategy of the organization, right? Just to give a schematic view of this, you know, there's a decision to be taken here. There's a decision here. There's decisions over there. Decisions, decisions, and decisions. And that's a lot of decisions, basically. So you need a way to, to make those decisions. And most of the times in projects, uh, we know that um, um, the distinction between an architectural decision, a strategic decision, and an implementation detailed decision um, are pretty clear. There are other times that those boundaries not be as clear as, 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 um, as in other projects. And the teams themselves would need to define what those boundaries are, what is a strategic decision, and what is an implementation detailed decision, um, to keep the balance. Right. So essentially, a KTD is a document. Right. Um, you see on the left-hand side the whole uh, confluence document, right? I'll go through section by section just to let you know what it is, and then I'll show you a real one. Um, we have it in confluence uh, because we would like to address business people as well and have them contribute. So let's start. First thing first is you have the header section. The header section contains control information about the KTD. You know, what's its status, what's its impact, 
Um, any other related KTDs? Uh, any user stories that are related to the specific decisions that, that need to be taken? Who's the business owner of, uh, of this challenge? Who's the driver of this KTD? Someone is responsible of actually filling in and coming up with the solutions. You'll see in a minute. Who approves this? Which means who's the decision maker? Uh, who contributes to the KTD? And a, a lot of the times, because we are talking about strategic decisions, there might be proof of concepts that need to be made in the context of a KTD for a specific approach to be ruled in or ruled out to find advantages and disadvantages. And um, those are being noted over there as KTD tasks. And those are tasks that need to be done before um, the KTD um, can finish. The KTD finishes by taking a decision. Then you have the background section. You have to define the challenge, um, any background information that provides context to this particular challenge, key requirements that are coming to the business, and then you have clarification questions. Uh, you'll see later on how we run it, but essentially it's a two-step process. One, one is a conversation around defining what the right problem is, and then there's a second conversation around the solutions and the recommendation uh, from us to the client, and the second set of uh, a second discussion around this. So. Clarification questions are being captured here. This is to the person who would be driving this KTD. Um, they may need to, to ask questions and source answers uh, from, from the client sometimes. And this is being there, captured uh, over there. The next is the solution section. So essentially, um, what we are doing is creating solutions and approaches. So this is where you uh, sort of like capture this. Um, it can be three, it can be two, it can be more than three. Essentially, you expand this as necessary, and this comes into, into three sections, really. You have uh, your solution where you describe it in, in, a, in a sentence, you, then you have some pros and cons, and then you call what we call the traffic light, right? So, pro tip, use your business uh, project KPIs to create this section over there, because that would give you a very easy way to relate the decisions back to the business owners. And, um, and you know, you'll see through the traffic light system, sometimes it's very visible which solution is the best for a given context. So that, what that does is relates it back to business needs and it's much easier to bring like the technical solution and the business people together to understand why a specific decision is being made. And finally, you have the discussion and decision section. Um, any follow-up questions after you, that's on the second step when you are presenting um, the solutions, the ones that you have ruled out and the ones you are recommending to the client, then you may have uh, the follow-up questions from the client that you may need to, to answer. Uh, you're, you're capturing the answers there. Uh, you list the assumptions, main assumptions for the given decision, the key points of it, and then the, the record of the decision, right? So. What you end up doing, uh, sorry, what you end up having is a record of a specific decision which, approach, which approaches have been considered, what is exactly the context, and what is the challenge. You go from the way back up. So essentially, as you accumulate like uh, um, records of those, you, you have all your key decisions on a project documented for further use. I'll show you a real example later on. So I, I want to quickly touch upon the workflows uh, just before. So the process from a process perspective is, is, is not that uh, difficult. It's quite simple, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's been designed to actually be a lightweight process. Um, the main question is whether there is a strategic or an architectural decision that's to be made, right? And if, if not, usually then there's only one solution, you just consider it, it's an implementation detail, it goes, uh, you evaluate it, goes into your backlog, and then you move on. Um, but if it is a strategic decision, usually there might be more than one approaches, and it's not really clear which approach serves best the organization um, and the business needs that they have. So essentially that's how you then go into preparing all the solutions and all the approaches, outlining the solutions in pros and cons, and then having that evaluation step before making the decision. And 
I want to emphasize that evaluating the need, creating like the first bits of the KTD, the challenge, the context, uh, you know, the, the real requirements behind and the motivations behind a few things, is um, essentially defining 99% of the solution, right? Like defining the right problem makes, is, is, is sort of like guiding you to the solution most of the times, right? Um, the second bit that I would like to outline in this process is that if, when you're considering or you're forcing yourself to consider multiple solutions, essentially um, you really hone down on, on, on understanding the benefits of the solution um, and you do that in the context of the problem. And the problem is what, you know, like it's the burning issue for the client, the problem they have. So it, it certainly helps you consult in, in a higher level um, to, to the client in, in a more constructive uh, way. And, and finally, it's important to assume the role of, of, of a technical partner, an impartial technical partner, especially at this level, you know, uh, consultative le level. Um, because at this point and during the KTD, um, you're talking about the, the technical capabilities, you're talking about business needs, not necessarily about the commercial aspects. Although the commercial aspects, certainly if it is, it is a business need, and it comes through the traffic-like system usually, because that's a KPI. You know, implementation costs or operational costs need to be low, and it comes through as a KPI. So you can run it in both, I'll show you how you can run it in Agile Sprints and run it through Waterfall. Um, Agile Sprints is, is the most complex um, and the reason is you have an ongoing process and you need to somehow factor you know, the fact that you don't really know some of the approaches before you actually start reaching, discussing the implementa implementation details, right? So um, what, what, what we said is Usually, it's a two-step process. Um, what we run it is a few days apart, so there's time for someone, for the driver, to, to organize th their thoughts around uh, the solutions and what's the pros and cons, understand the KPIs and how that works. Um, so you see, we, we have a few days apart per session, uh, per KTD, and what essentially this schema um, shows is that um, a KTD may be informed by a sprint planning meeting that you don't really know exactly how to approach a specific issue. Um, and then it, it, it just informs a backlog refinement meeting or another sprint planning meeting. And by informing, uh, means that you know, it makes clearer what the requirements for specific user stories are and makes it clearer whether those user stories need further discussion in the context of those meetings to understand the, the implementation details of those, right? Um, in the context of a waterfall project, it's much easier. You just run technical discovery uh, period with uh, the KTDs and one after the other. You document it. You have this corpus of KTDs within your confluence uh, space or any other medium you may choose to, to run this. And then you just inform the tech delivery around this, really. Um, so let me show you a real example, what it looks like. Um, so I'll, I'll let you in into a problem we run for, for a client. So around a third of the way into the delivery of the project, um, there were new requirements that came to light and they challenged completely what we had pitched as um, the hosting platform for, uh, for the project. And um, that meant that we had to accommodate the new requirements, understand you know, how, what, what we should have, what, what, sh what we should do as a hosting solution for the client. And, but we shouldn't put in jeopardy the stability of the platform as it was at that point nor the stability of the project, meaning we would still need to hit the deadlines and the budget, uh, which was the very tricky part. So what do you do when you have like a, strategic, a profound <laughs> strategic decision to make? You run a KTD, right? So I'll just go through um, 
you see, you know, our people driving this, contributing, myself over there, um, who's informed and, you know, the impact it had, it was pretty high. Um, essentially, that's, that's how a background information looks like, some relevant information, use cases that we may have, edited diagrams, anything that would give context to the person driving this, right? And then the high level requirements, you know, what are the, 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 the boundaries of, of, of these solutions are coming over there? You see how we sort of like um, came, came up with the solutions. Essentially, solution number one was out of the question. We knew that straight away. Um, and through the traffic light, light system, you already see that like the third solution seems to have like more green, right? So that gives you like a good indication already, you know, what the recommendation might be to the client. In this particular, um, we had multiple rounds because then there were open questions that we had to go one by one, source it. Because it was hosting and we were going for a cloud native serverless application, um, sorry, infrastructure instead of a platform as a service that we initially thought, then we had to go through rounds of, of estimation um, for now, like implementation costs, but also operational costs. We had to go, you know, uptime and support and proposal of infrastructure. You see, like this KTD sort of like started in incorporating other things that are really important for this particular problem. That, that's fine to do, right? There's no. Um, and then finally, you know, we summarized what the key points are and we made a decision. And through this process, we were able to actually honor both the timeline and the original budget requirements. And we just changed part of the engine's mid flight. And, and, you know, that then created new user stories that we had to adjust our deployment pipelines. You know, that was work that we were not anticipating that we would have, but it's work that came out from this KTD that needs to happen for, for this uh, extra, sorry, this extra step to happen. Um, just to show you what it looks like, in Azure DevOps, which is like a horrendous <laughs> platform. Like, um, so this is like a corpus of KTDs. You know, what, what you, would you run KTDs on? You know, anything that has strategic effect, like the backend content model for, for an organization that wants to move its content forward and they may have um, ideas about reusing components is, is a profound strategic decision, right? So you can, you can decide on those things running the, the KTD. Um, in this particular situation, this is a decoupled Gatsby application. You know, a lot of questions around Gatsby came into being. Um, obviously, choosing that technology and choosing which features of the technology have prof profound effects on the longevity of the platform and the maintainability and scalability of the platform. So again, you know, to address all these issues and sev have several approaches, we run KTDs. What the KTD does really well is allow also a lot of people to come together and discuss several things, right? Contribute to what is a pro, uh, what is an advantage, what is a disadvantage, you know, what is, which decision is better, or sorry, which approach is better on a specific KPI. So through this system, we managed to, to, to also get consultants, external consultants for, from the technologies involved and everybody to actually come down to a, to, to a common decision. Um, I'm just showing you, essentially what you see here is the same, like you see on the conference template, it just doesn't look as good, but it's exactly the same type of information and exactly the same type of decision making happening, right? So moving on, I quickly want to touch upon um, some of the lessons learned. First, allow me to share, to share some observations, right? So. It's, it's a KT process is a transformative way of consulting with the client. Help them, but also us as, as an agency, um, co-create the solution, um, define uh, what needs to be uh, delivered, and create consensus, which is really important, you know, going forward, especially in complex projects. It's generally very well accepted from, from client side and from teams, but be aware if you if you, you want to implement it within uh, your teams, the collaborative nature of, of the process, sometimes it's not easy for everyone to follow, right? And um, 
especially at the beginning. So there might need a little bit of hand holding, helping like the team members being open and sharing and be, being open to expressing an opinion and someone else having another opinion and it's okay to have a conversation about it and it's not gonna be the end of the world if we choose, you know, next JS over Gatsby because that is the context of this project, right? So, um, so as of lessons, right? So trust is a really important currency, right? And makes decision making much, much easier. So if you lose trust with, with a client or amongst team members, the decision making process is going to be way harder despite you know, the best efforts or methodologies used. <coughs> also teams that are defining things together, they deliver better. They understand, um, they, they take the extra step basically sometimes that's needed to make things easier. Once you make a decision, it's best to follow through that decision, implement it, you know, go through the user stories, get the implementation details, deliver those user stories, and then evaluate, you know, what that decision was about. If you keep changing the decision as your you know, it's like changing the parachute while you're flying, but changing parachutes. Basically, at some point, you need to open the parachute and land, right? Um, be aware, sometimes, you'll see, you know, decisions being dependent on other decisions, and sometimes, you know, there's, there's going to be situations where you would think that you can tackle a couple of decisions within a single KTD, keep them single-minded, like KT, one KTD per decision per thing. And that is, I think, like a, a big lesson. So don't cram the decisions. Sometimes getting the approach clear and getting like what the user stories implementing that approach uh, are is, is a long way. So. Um, what that means is that for, for specific KTDs, it may be straightforward, but the user stories are. For other KTDs, you might need to follow up with extra conversation at the, at the technical uh, details level and the implementation details level and allow those conversations to happen, even though you may have exhausting conversations at the KTD level, but they're working at different levels. So there might be that this is like such an important issue that we really need to hone down on the details to be able for someone to deliver this technically, right? So good KTDs don't guarantee good delivery. That's probably because of the previous point. Um, you know, the, the delivery is dependent on the user story, the level of detail, how well defined they are, you know, how actionable they are and all of this invest kind of thing, right? So there's still, a, K a KTD doesn't relieve you of the responsibilities at the backlog level, right? What it does is gives you like a very clear map of what your architectural uh, situation is. So decisions also need to be scoped and you need to scope for context, you need to scope for time frame, and you need to scope for budget. And that's really important not to forget that. And finally, that's, you know, you know the term analysis paralysis, right? Some, some people may use the KTD process to just overanalyze stuff and keep analyzing and analyzing. Um, it's good to know when something is good enough, right? And I think that's the previous point, essentially scope, what the KTD is in, for context, timeline, and budget. Um, there was a talk earlier today about the architectural decisions records. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting concept. Um, I, I watched it um, and I've seen the work that uh, Lollabot has done around this. To me, it seems like the ADRs are a documentation medium, right? The KTD is more of a discussion medium and coming up with the solution. And they, I, I mean, from what I've seen, they can work in tandem, right? Um, there's another ARC42 is, is used in Germany, apparently. Uh, so some of our clients asked about this. We presented the KTD back to them. They like it better, but. And, um, you know, we've been trying this actually with real, real clients, Heiko, um, Achilles also, you know. So that's it. <laughs> so thanks, thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh -huh.
I'll be more than happy to take questions or discuss this. Um, by the way, my um, the app is just stopped working on me. Can't wo I can't connect to the server, so I don't know. Yeah, is it? Okay, but do you have? Uh, it, it needs me to log on again. And can you? Yes. Can you? I'm. I'm not sure. Can you just? All right. Thanks. There's one question. So. What are the profiles, architect, tech lead, product owner, that contribute on KTD? All right, so that's a good question. Essentially, it's um, the way we have been running it is in a distributed way. We want, you know, front end KTDs, for instance, you know, there's no, it doesn't make sense for someone who's not from a front end background to run, right? There are DevOps oriented KTDs, there may be architectural oriented KTDs, you know, whether you're going to be using a, a content syndication system or just straight on the API, right? So depending on the context, you have a different, a different driver. And that's precisely the reason um, this is a collaborative approach, because you spread out the responsibility of who's coming up with the solutions. and. And it's not those persons that are also taking the decisions. These are the people who have the knowledge and they are documenting the approaches, right? The decision then is taken as a group and approved by the approver. And in that sense then also allows everybody not to fear or, you know, like in, in, a, in a blame game situation, you know, not pointing fingers, but essentially allows everybody to contribute their knowledge and their expertise and skills and then have this medium, the, the KTD, to, to sort of like bring that all together and, and help them make the decision. So uh, the, the, there's no other question on the QA. Um, is there a, anybody else who would like to ask something? Which kind of projects do you use it mostly? Agile, would you say, or waterfall? Does anybody use waterfall? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, Actually, in fact, the, the, you may have like a hybrid kind of situation where you would run a technical discovery for a few weeks prior to starting a project. And you have like the, the really big JTDs taken care back at that point, you know, just like what is going to be the front end framework, right? Um, and then you have also other KTDs that may run parallel to the project delivery, right? Um, I, I haven't had it as a lesson learned because I haven't decided myself whether it is a lesson or not, but sometimes it might be beneficial for the project not to leave too many really, really strategic decisions to when the project actually starts being delivered, right? Um, so, yeah. This would be more beneficial before starting the project than, than during it. Because uh, when doing agile projects, the requirement is, I think, the most important process to, to uh, make the important decisions, technical decisions. S certainly, certainly. And that's the theory of it, yeah. right? Uh, but if you have, like, a Clients who want Agile, but they don't want any of the downfalls of Agile, which is the refactoring aspect of, of running a project, then, you know, you're better off, especially like the real strategic stuff, the ones that they have real architectural impact to, to, to make them make those decisions beforehand, because you know where you're going, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the reality of it. Um, it might be very different if you are in a, in a, internal project setting or a product. So if you, if, you, if you are an internal team, not, a, not, not like us, commissioned on a project, it might be different, right? But if you're working for someone, uh, it's, sometimes it's really hard to have the argument of, oh yes, now we need to refactor this because, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, so yeah, that's a judgment call and it's, I, 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 it's not at the technical level, <laughs> the judgment is more of a business level. Yeah. All right. So I think there's um, there's a mic over here. So if if someone wants to ask a question, can you just stand up? So I yep. can you just grab the mic? Sure. Thanks. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, basically if a KTD involves another decision to be made, do you open another KTD yeah. and create some kind of dependency yeah. between both? Or how does it work? So let me just go back to show you exactly how it works. So, whoops, sorry. So that's quite fast, but it's all the way back. So you see this related KTDs and then related user stories. Essentially, you know, a KTD might spark other KTDs and those decisions need to be made prior for a decision that you started running the KTD. You just link them and, and that, that way you have a trail as to why specific, you know, which decision influence other decisions. Okay, so everything related needs to be resolved prior to continuing with the current KTD, right? If, if there is, if, if one influences the other, yes. So to give you a, an actual example, you need to decide um, on, you know, your front-end frame. If you have a decoupled solution, you need to decide on your front-end framework before design, deciding how you're going to implement your design system, right? So if it's a React-based framework, then you would know that in, in Figma or in uh, Storybook, you can, you can write your components in, in React. But unless you have decided that, like if, if your decision is to go with Angular, then you know, like that, that decision impacts the other decision. Nice. Thank you. Right. No worries. Anyone else? No? Can someone check this on the live QA? No one. All right. Okay, so if, if there aren't any other questions, thank you very much for being here.